Hi. Have you got one of those drawers at home that's the just-in-case drawers? It's something that you've got and you think, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to need this or not. Just in case, I better pull it away. Just in case, I better store it. If you're one of those who, who have a loft, um, that normally you'll find that your loft seems to be full of things that was just in case. Don't want to let that go, just in case. You never know, might need it, just in case. Some people have sheds with exactly the same thing. Tools and items or a, a piece of wood that this is an off cut of some work that you've been doing and you put it in there because you just never know just in case you can gather what my shed probably looks like. Walking around the church building very recently and realised we have a number of things here that we store or have been stored just in case. And like maybe your drawer or your loft or your shed or your cupboard, those just in case you've not touched for 15 years. I still am recalling very much the day when uh, we moved into our present home that we stored some boxes up in the loft that we didn't quite know what to do with the contents. And it was about 15 years later that when I was up in the loft again, I thought, I forgot all about this box. What's in here? And it's stuff that we don't need, we're never going to need, didn't need to go up there. But it's that just in case. Just in case is based on indecision of not knowing maybe what the future looks like. So let's hold something in reserve just in case. Wonder if our life with God is like a just in case. I know it says I should be serving the Lord with all my heart, all my strength, all my mind. But just in case, let me just hang on to that thing from my old life just in case just in case where the Lord is asking you to let it go release it don't hang on to it anymore stop making it part of your life come on trust me give it up you're going yeah but just in case I need it to fall back on. I found myself uh, being led to the great famous verse in Joshua 24, um, the end of verse 15, where Joshua says, but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Then I look back a bit on that and it starts with verse 14 and he says, so fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live. But as for me and my family, says Joshua, we will serve the Lord. He was challenging them to actually trust the Lord wholeheartedly. It was a part that the people of Israel, even though they were being shown this promised land, even though they were living now partly in that fullness of what God has promised, there was a but let's hang on to these gods. Let's hang on to these idols just in case. But Joshua was challenging the people of Israel saying, look, hasn't the Lord proved himself enough to you? Release 
Trust in him wholeheartedly. Choose to serve him. Really let go. Really let go. Abandon yourself fully to trust the Lord wholeheartedly. Don't hang on to stuff to go just in case. Just in case of what? What's the very worst that's going to happen if you trust the Lord? Oh, yeah, we'll be released. Wow, amazing. We trust the Lord and serve him only. We've only got one Lord that we need to love and trust. We haven't got to fulfill the needs of lots of other mini gods. Mini gods being maybe stuff that's filling up your just in case drawer. I talked about this Sunday just gone about sacrifice and how much uh, we take the example of our Lord Jesus Christ who sacrificed a lot. And that the fact the Lord wants literally every ounce of our life as like a drink offering. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, go back to the sermon um, or to the talk that was pour it out or pour out it's entitled. The Lord wants us to abandon ourselves, trust wholeheartedly in him and what he's doing in the future. I believe this is an unprecedented time, and I'm not the only one, that the Lord is going to be seriously pouring out his spirit uh, in the nation, around the world, but let's just concentrate on the UK for just a moment. On our local streets, he is going to be pouring out new wine like we've never seen before. And he's asking us to partner, abandon ourselves fully and immerse ourselves fully in what he is doing. Really exciting stuff to really love the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. I suppose my biggest fear is, will I be doing it, but then also hanging on to stuff that the Lord is saying, let go, just in case it doesn't happen. Prophets were very much like that. They just declared what they saw the Lord doing. It was others around them that were probably going, well, when I see it, yeah, and then maybe I might catch up. The Lord is saying, now is the time to catch up. Now is the time to get ahead of the curve. Now is the time to abandon yourself. Don't do the just in case. Allow the Lord to release through you. Abandon yourself upon him. Trust him. God bless to you. Bye-bye.